Hey cuties, fall must be officially here because I have my cozy blanket and I'm wearing a cozy sweater and I have a cozy drink, but I'm not going to show you until we come to snack and drink of the week, but I am so excited and by I'm not going to tell you until we get to snack and drink of the week, I may have just lied to you because like I got to tell you cutes, it is our first episode of fall. We've set our bucket list and we are now hopping in, but also it is 6 a.m. in the morning. I have woken up and come to the podcast studio and just sat down and recording. You know, this is my favorite type of record. And today's episode is kind of like a big jumbo cutie chat. We're just like BFFing it out today. So I think we're going to switch it up and do snack and drink of the week first thing so we can enjoy our cozy sips while we hang out. Okay, cutes, let's pull up this drink. Um, Brought back the pumpkin mug because I figure so fitting, but I made my first hot matcha latte. I was about to make a peppermint tea and then I was like, ooh, I only have like such a small amount of matcha left because I bought, well, I, you know, it doesn't, I don't think it came in a very big bag. I think there was only one option. But I bought whatever the bag was. But you go through it so quickly. It's kind of an expensive hobby. So I might be bringing it back to just Starbucks Friday where you see if I replace it. But it is fun. And it's fun when people are over to offer matcha if that's something they would want. But I put it in my clear pumpkin mug. So we've got green and orange pumpkin. I love it. But I'm so excited to try. I might not have put enough matcha powder in now that I'm looking at it. But, you know, the only hot matcha lattes I've had have never been in a clear cup. I've only seen the top, which has always been like a greeny foam. And I kind of made it flat white-esque style, which means that it's made with a higher percentage milk and also less uh, coffee. But this is a matcha. But like, I can't remember if it's made with 3% milk or if it's made with a creamy foam or a mix. Anyway, so I did milk and half cream (laughs) because that's what I figured would get my highest percentage milk. So let's try. Cheers, cutes. Mm. Oh, and I put in lavender honey. Ooh, that is creamy, dreamy, good. Mm. That's like a hug. Yum, 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 yum. Mm, I love that lavender honey. It's so good. I have two spare jars, so I'm I'm stocked up for the winter. Um, okay, let's get into my snack. This week, uh, this is going to be controversial cutes <laughs> to the avocado haters as myself. I have never liked avocado. Well, okay, that's a lie. Back in the day, I liked avocado. When I was a kid, I used to I remember, um, I used to have these salads that was like a tomato. It was just, it was just diced up tomato, like hunks, chunks of tomato, chunks of avocado and sardines. You know what? Saying this, I'm reminded that Ro recently tried a sardine for the first time and she loved it. So I should make her the salad because she'd probably love it. And basically you would just put on a fork, like a piece of tomato, a piece of avocado and a piece of sardine. And I remember loving that as a kid. It was a great, delicious snack. But then I got older and I didn't. And people are always like, oh, do you not like avocado because of the texture? Is it a texture thing? It's really not a texture thing. Like, I think the texture of avocado is like creamy, dreamy, beautiful. It's a flavor. And it's something that like, if it's in something, I can taste it. It's not even like a picker in. Like, I try. I'm always polite, of course. But like, if I go to like a sushi restaurant, I will request no avocado. I won't just pick it out. And when I do get avocado, it's like kind of a, ugh. then I have to like pick it out. And then because avocado is so fragile, it like leaves a remnant. It's kind of like a slug. Um, And so I'll have to like shove the roll or whatever the avocado was in full of ginger and um, wasabi to like take away that flavor. And you know what? I've been doing that. I've actually recently bought grocery store rolls twice that have had like a tiny piece of avocado. And I, instead of taking the avocado out, I've just been piling on the ginger and the wasabi like within the past few months. And it's been fine. And then this week I made guacamole um, for my sister-in-law's dinner on a Wednesday night dinner. And it, I had took a bite of it because I was like, okay, I want to make sure that it's like some good vibe. And it was actually 
so delicious and I've actually ate all the leftovers like even I was putting it with my fajitas or not fajitas quesadillas that I had left over but even yesterday we'd run out of quesadillas <laughs> yeah quesadillas sorry I thought I was saying fajitas we'd run out of that stuff but we still had some dips and sauces left and I was like oh I wish we had chips and then I realized we did have chips up in up in the top cupboard from a while ago so I threw them in the oven to toast them up and I was just dipping them in the guac all by itself like I had other dips but like the chip itself was just going in the guac so I think I'm like slowly re-entering avocado girly and like my mind is kind of blown like I don't know if I'm ready for avocado toast necessarily because I've never actually had an avocado toast before because the idea of that just like ooh made my skin crawl and you know toast is like one of my favorite food groups but I think the trick is like avocado is pretty neutral when you add stuff to it so it's like the same concept of me adding stuff to my sushi when you like fill like I put so much stuff in this um, guacamole it wasn't just avocado and lime and salt or whatever like I had tomatoes and onion and cumin and different seasonings and like it really was delicious so I'm kind of like in my experimental avocado phase and I'd love some recommendations. Like this is pretty wild. I want to see if like I've oh, I've turned a leaf and like I like avocado again. Because one thing I, I love about myself is that I like am super not picky. Like I'm pretty open to most foods. I'll usually try everything. Um, yeah, I'm like, I, I love that I'm like easy to eat with most times. My husband would probably differ because when I'm hangry and it comes between me and him and he's like what do you want for dinner and I like can't say what I want because I don't know what I want and a lot of time it's like I don't know what I want until you say what you want and I realize that's not what I want (laughs) but like in other settings I'm pretty chill like (laughs) but anyways yeah so guacamole homemade guacamole personally the one that I made specifically um yeah I'm not gonna just have moshed avocado I'm not there like that can't be me moshed moshed avocado um but yeah everything else delicious anyways cute that's our snack and drink of the week so let's get into our weekly recap we're a little flippy floppy today but I'm happy we did it that way because I can sip Mm. this past week was so unexpected I'm gonna call it that unexpected but before I jump in to actually no should I wait till this week I have it? I kind of left last week's episode off on a cliffhanger. Like I was like, we're packing and going somewhere. So I'm going to give you a little teaser into this week I learned. Cuties, while you're listening to this, we are literally landing in the land of pizza and pasta and um, gelato and tiramisu and wine and focaccia we're in italy oh my gosh that is just wild to me Ah! we me trev and ro are having a family vacay in italy (sighs) we're at fall girl italy or fall cutie italy because we're not all girls (laughs) and i am so 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 excited kind of feels so surreal and I'm gonna jump into it all in this week I learned but ah so make sure you're following me on Instagram and TikTok because I plan to be snip snapping photos left and right and I have booked some really cool kitchen looking spaces so I plan to do some grocery shopping and snacky plates and cooking oh I'm so excited so Make sure you follow me at Five Years Time Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. It's going to be such a fun time. Ah! Okay. But before, that's just a teaser. So this past week. Okay. This past week was so unexpected. Like I kind of planned it out as I need to get my life in order, pack, organize, everything. So I just, this is our first time traveling with Ro and just in general, like I went to Vancouver this summer um, for like a week, which was so lovely, but very much last minute. Like the trip wasn't last minute. I booked it in advance, but you, you all know it all got switched around. So like the actual packing and whatever was last minute because um, we ended up switching it to Vancouver from Kelowna. 
And so I kind of just threw a bunch of stuff in the suitcase. It was only me traveling and I just needed my passport. It was within Canada or not my passport. I only need my driver's license. It was in within Canada. Like it was very much a chill travel situation. I was going to stay with friends. Like I was in a place where I knew like Canada to Canada, province to province. Like I knew what stores there would be. It'd be easy for me to borrow or buy something, whatever. So it was just like, not very stressful actually when I got to the airport it was a little stressful because it was like whoa forgot how busy the airport could be but other than that but me and Trevor together have not traveled since 2019 and we have not traveled with Rosie and we had planned to always like our whole plan was to take off um like Trevor was going to take paternity leave during our mat leave time and we were going to travel and it was going to be so fun we saved up all during our um our pregnancy like we saved up to like give us this like freedom during this time that we thought would like never happen where me and Trevor both weren't working and we had this new baby and like she'd be free to travel with whatever obviously none of that happened because COVID came along so like fast forward I got Rose passport this past winter with just because I was like I just need to get her passport because if I get her passport then I'll have the flexibility to say yes when an opportunity comes up to travel. And so then, um, or like create an opportunity more likely, but like, that's what I mean by yes. Like, just like do it. Like if I, if the urge comes, like we just do it. And so, um, yeah, anyways, this is our first time traveling with, as parents, um, with a child who is now a toddler and well, she's not, I, feel like she's between a toddler and a kid you know what I mean like she's that age three and a half where she's just like a human and independent and yeah um doesn't sleep all the time so it's like I just wanted to give myself the week to really thoughtfully pack I'm packing us in only carry-ons um we're gonna be gone for a few weeks so but we have capability of doing laundry and stuff but it was just like it's kind of an awkward time of year in the sense that it's like you know it's like that fall beginning of fall where it's like hot in the morning cold cool in or cool in the morning cool at night hot during the day like you have to pack with so many layers and be prepared for kind of like every type of weather so I was trying to just like make sure that everything was really thought out. Also, Ro, I feel like is that age where like every season I'm always having to buy her new clothes because she just like grows every season, right? So it's like, oh gosh, I need to go give myself time to see what fits her and then get more stuff and whatever. So I had planned this week to be super chill. I was just going to do a lot of like closing tasks for work because I want to make sure that I get to enjoy my vacation and um, just so you know I have pre-recorded podcast episodes we will not be missing anything we have some amazing ones coming up so I'm so excited about that so I've just been like trying to get all that stuff in line while also just like having a relaxing packing experience doing laundry I feel like all I've been doing is so much laundry it's like every day it's like oh we've worn this oh oh yeah and I feel like Trevor doesn't have I joked because Trevor really doesn't have that much clothes or at least bottoms like he wears like the same pair of like couple pants and like has tops that he just switches out and so I joked with him a week ago I was like I guess you're just not gonna wear like will you just wear a bathrobe to work all week because he works downstairs um and he was like Grace you can't pack my stuff until and I'm like I'm joking but I swear I've washed his pants like so many times I'm like okay this is it you can't wear them anymore and then he's like I don't have anything else I have to do this and I'm like ah fine you can have them but anyway so Monday, I was just getting a bunch of work stuff done. And I was like, okay, it's okay. I have uh, later on to do some packing. And so I got a bunch of work stuff done on Monday and I laid out my stuff. I laid out all my stuff and put it in a laundry basket. And so I kind of was generous with the first layout. And then when I went to pack, I was like, I'll pick out the things that I really don't think I'll need. And I also want to leave room for shopping. And like, I always feel like even when I try and underpack, I always overpack. So I'm trying to be really thoughtful because like I also want to see what the shops have and like have that flexibility. So I just need to take a sip. So I laid all my stuff and then I piled it all into a laundry basket and put it aside. And then I went through row stuff because me and my mom had planned to go shopping on Tuesday, which I think I said in the podcast was what we were going to do last week. Um, And so 
yeah, we went shopping. My well, I was gonna go shopping myself, and then I had told my mom, and I was like, oh yeah, there's stuff I need. Um, like, can I come too? I was like, awesome. So we had a little girly day. We went to the outlets. Our outlets like are getting so boob and bang and good. Like, I love it, and I love that we live so close to outlets. So we went to the outlets, and I it was like everyone needed socks and underwear. So I was getting everyone their socks and underwear. Row pay- basically, I had said earlier on the podcast that I went to Walmart to get her or not Walmart winners to get her a few like fall outfits and that was exactly what this was for so I what I did for her was lots of dresses because I figured dresses are perfect because you can either put you can put long sleeves underneath short sleeves underneath you can put leggings underneath you can put shorts underneath like you can make a dress so versatile um, for like lots of different weathers so I'd already got her a few of those dresses where I can just layer very easily under like overall type dresses. So I really need it for her just like leggings and long sleeve shirts. And so we hit up Old Navy. I feel like Old Navy is my favorite spot for just getting like leggings and like long sleeve shirts, especially they always have good flannel long sleeve shirts, which are amazing layering pieces as you get deeper into the, the cooler months. But anyways, and then for myself, it was just like I needed a pair of comfy but cute walking shoes. Like I really just want it. I have a pair of sneaks that are just so beat up. They're at the point where they're like almost not comfortable anymore. They're my Asics. I love them, but I've had them for so long. They're definitely over their miles. I used to wear them for running. Like when I back when I was living in Toronto and it was COVID and I had nothing, no form of movement. I like put or or mental pushes outside of being a mother because I was just in the condo all the time. I had done the couch to 5k, which like I'm not made for running it was so bad on my knees I had to stretch for like an hour after every run and buy these like expensive running shoes which I think is what you're supposed to do no matter what um well not that they're expensive I think you just have to have good quality running shoes it did make a difference but anyways long story short is I do love these Asics for just popping on and running around town but like if we're gonna be in Europe we're gonna be walking up and down around and around I just needed like good shoes that would stay on my feet And so I was like pretty sure I was going to land on Chucks because I love a good Converse. And like I have my low tops right now that are so beat up. I thrifted them, I think, last fall or maybe the fall before that or the spring before that. I think like a year and a half ago for like $10 in the men's section. And they were already beat up, which is beautiful because a pre-beat up Converse is amazing. But they're at the point where like they're falling apart on the inside of the shoe like they kind of need to say goodbye but they are so comfy and I love them so much. I haven't had high tops in years. I used to live, I had these butterfly high tops I was obsessed with. I also had these yellow, oh, anyways, I was like, I'm probably going to end up with Converse because I think that they're cute, um, like casually and like with a dress, like I love that vibe. And I love that Converse come in fun colors, but they're like also like even when they're a statement, they're kind of a neutral because they're like a sleeker shoe than like a chunky sneak, which I love the chunky sneak. But I just was trying to think versatility. I'm like, I can't bring two pairs of shoes. I actually really did want like a cool, chunky, like New Balance or something. Um, But I was like, I don't think this is the time. This isn't the shoe that is for this trip. Like I need something a little more versatile so we I actually ended up thrifting Trevor this awesome pair I think they are new balances awesome pair of like dad sneak new balances which are pretty much in pristine condition like on the outside they look fantastic you can tell they've been worn on the inside but like they're so cool and they were I was so excited because when I first saw them I was like oh and then I tried them on and they were a little too big for me and so Trevor's just like a little bit bigger foot size than me so they are perfect for him so he's gonna have the awesome uh, dad sneaks and I got the coolest chucks ever I'm so freaking excited when I walked in they had this brown pair of high tops which was like brown with a white roundabout and then they had a black all black and like I'm not really an all black girly um not that I don't love black but neutrals aren't my favorite but I was like oh all black is kind of cool um like I'll try them on but I asked I was like okay what sizes do you have in these and they literally only had like I'm like a size nine sometimes like I'm like a nine and a half truly but also every shoe place is different so I always say like I'm a nine to a ten it just depends but I forgot that when you're in like the low low cut converse not the high tops um it's like comfortable to have a bigger size for me personally I don't know if this is for everyone but when you're in the high top 
a smaller size is actually more comfortable. So anyways, I was like, can I get a nine and a half or a 10? And she was like, oh, we only have nines in like pretty much every converse. They only had nines. And I was like, I was like, you know what? Like might as well try it on because then at least I know for if we go into another store that has converse. So I tried on, they didn't have any of the brown. Clearly the brown was popular. I, and I was kind of like favoring the brown over the black because you know me, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to say I'm an earth tone girly. That's not really true. I'm wearing this bright red sweater, but like I'm a color cutie. Um, so I feel like brown would really like vibe with the fall vibes. And so um, I tried on the black one and the second I put it on, I was like, eh, like, I don't know. It wasn't sparky joy for me. I didn't hate it, but it just wasn't like me. It felt like too, too grounded. So then I was like looking around. They had like the Converse set up like in the sneaker section. But then I was looking up at the top of this like shelf where there were more sneakers that were different brands. And all of a sudden I realized they have this whole top row of Converse. And I was like, oh, what's up there? Like so tall. I'm pretty tall. So and I had to go on my tippy toes to like see it. And they all look kind of like higher top Converse, not higher top, um, platform Converse, which like I always fear platform in the sense that it would be hard to walk. You have to pick up your foot higher. Um, but they're like different type of platform. I don't know. But I was like, and they were in such a fun color, like this purpley color. And I was like, I just got to try these on just for fun, just to see what they look like. One thing about me is like, I have big feet. I'm tall. I have bigger feet. And so um, whenever you see shoes in a shoe store, like they normally are showing you like a size six, a size seven. And you're like, oh my gosh, they're so cute because they're literally cute. They're small. They're adorable. But then when you get the bigger size, it's like, oh, wow. Okay. It sometimes is just like shocking how a shoe could be so cute when it's tiny. <laughs> So like I was like I'm just gonna try it on in my mind I was like is it gonna be too much like it's gonna make me feel like I have such a giant shoe on because it's got a bigger sole on it but I was like let's do it so I was like hey can I get these a size nine she's like awesome we have a size nine I second I tried them on they're the most comfortable chucks I've ever had in my entire life because sometimes with Converse you know they're flat they can like when all day walking comes like it can sometimes feel especially if you haven't worn Converse in a while like it can feel uh like my foot's just flat but these ones weren't there's I think there are like converse that are uh what are they called platform that are not like they're just like built up like a classic converse flat bottom but these ones were like a different kind they had an arch in them they were so unique anyways so, so the second I put them on haven't looked in the mirror and still tying them up I'm like these feel like 10 out of 10 so comfortable so put them both on went to look in the mirror and I was like oh my gosh like as I walked there, I was like, I feel like I walk better in these than any of my other shoes that I've ever walked in. Like they, my whole foot is just moving the way it's supposed to move. And then I looked in the mirror and I was like, they're so cool. I love the color. And they actually make my foot look more petite because like the way that the, the way that the, the sole is shaped on it. Like it looks so cool. I love it. So anyways, I was like, yes, I want these. I wasn't even thinking about the price. I was like, okay, all Converse cost pretty much the same thing, whatever. But we are at the outlet mall. And she's like, amazing. You're going to be so hyped. They're 50% off. And I was like, yes. So that is one thing about me because I am the beautiful redhead that I am means that I, my like colors are not like the colors I enjoy wearing and I find like really complimentary are not everyone's favorite colors because I just like I feel like they would look good on other people but people just stay away from them but I've just like grown to know what my colors are anyways so when I go to the outlets literally so many things so many good things for me personally that I would love and know look fabulous are always on such good deals, especially at Aerie. Like we went to Aerie. I have that bathing suit. I've worn it in a few TikToks. People are always like, where is it from? Where is it from? And like, it is still hanging in the back of Aerie. There's like a huge chunk handful of them still there for like literally 20 bucks, maybe even less now because like they're still there. I just feel like people are like hesitant to try it on because it, there's it's so many colors. It's like orange and purple and whatever. And I think it's poppy. I love that bathing suit so much. But like whenever I wear it, people are always like, where is that from? And I'm always like airy and it's on like amazing discount. And my sister-in-law, who's like blonde, like blonde, blonde, totally opposite of me, put it on. 
one time and she looked amazing in it. Like I think the color is versatile. Anyways, fast forward, I got those Converse. Then we went to Aerie because I need to get a few new bras. And I was so, I'm like obsessed with the, I think it's called a smooth smoothies or something like that line of bras from Airy, and I was so sad because I walked in and there were none there and I've only tried them once I have one it's like neon pink and I just wanted to get a couple more that were more versatile color that you like could wear under a white shirt um and they were none and I was so sad and then I went to the like outlet part because the front of the store is like the current stuff then I went to the outlet part at the back of the store and I was like oh they've discounted them all so I don't know if they're taking the line away or if they're just switching over to fall colors and haven't put them out yet but like they were all on super discount so I got two of those super discounted and then I saw this amazing vest literally full price a hundred dollars I've been wanting a vest for you don't even know how many years, but like I haven't wanted to commit to paying like an Aritzia price because they have great vests and whatever and fun colors because, you know, I want a different color. I don't want black. I don't want white. Like I want something fun. And so they had this like green, um, this like it was like a it's not a forest green. It's like a almost like a goldy green. I don't know how to explain it, which is, again, a color that not a lot of people would like go to, which is obviously why it's at the discount. And it's from last year. Literally a hundred dollars full price on sale. Twenty bucks. Twenty dollars. And it's this insane, beautiful, oversized vest that'll just be so amazing for like literally my life. But also this trip. I'm just so excited. So it was like a great shopping day. And I've just talked about it for so long. But yeah, it was a great shopping day. I got everything we need. I got Trevor needed a new like bum bag. He wanted like a nice big one that would hold a bunch of stuff for like a day out of travel. So and he wanted it in a lighter color. And I could literally find the perfect black one. And I was like, I can't buy it. He wants a light color. And I like kind of gave up on it mentally. And then I was like, hey, let's run into Adidas. Like Trevor needs socks. And they had one there perfect. And I like took all these pictures in it, wearing it from the side, from the other side to make sure that, that he like thought it was big enough or whatever. Or it wasn't too big. He was like, that's perfect. I was like, amazing. So yeah, it was a great shopping day. I also sold my mom on the UGG store. She was like, I need slippers. And at the beginning, it's kind of like a mall that you can walk a big circle around. And I knew the UGG store was like kind of at the end of where we would be going. And so she was like, I really need a new pair of slippers. Like she's always been a winter croc girly. Oh, on that note, we did get row her first pair of winter crocs, which are the ones with the fleece line. And we got her the coolest charms and she's like freaking obsessed with them. But anyways, she's always been a winter croc girly, but she was like, I kind of want to switch it up this year. I was like, awesome. Like you should really check out UGG. They have the most amazing slippers. I remember going into the outlet last year and thinking, um, like this is such a perfect gift in general. So like when the holiday season comes up, I think Ugg slippers are a perfect gift for people. And if you have an outlet near you, they have such good deals. Um, but I was like, you should really try them. Like they have ones that are like low top, uh, like don't have a back, have a back. They have ones that like are a slipper base or like the solid base. Then they also have Uggs themselves, which you could totally wear as slippers. Cause my mom likes like a supportive shoe in the house and like she likes the traction. And I was like, there's just so many options. And so I had like talked her up about this. And then we went into like all the shoe stores as we went along. Because, you know, I feel like outlets are like mainly shoe stores a lot of the time. And like nothing was vibing with her. And then we finished at Aerie and I was like, okay, like I think did we get everything? And she's like, Grace, you forgot about the Ugg store. Like you were telling me so much about it. I see it. And I was like, oh yeah, of course we have to go to the Ugg store. I kind of forgot. I thought we had given up on the slipper dream. And she wasn't like going all in when I was selling the Ugg store to her she was like okay Grace like whatever you're saying so we walk into the Ugg store and literally she's like oh my gosh and so we try on like a few and she's like oh I kind of love this one and then we those ones had backs and then we went and tried on another one that had no back and then we went and tried another one that was like super fluffy but she was like I don't really like the fluff and then you know the classic I forget what they're called but they're like the low top like the mini Uggs the Ugg minis um maybe they're not minis because they have no boot portion um but they do have a back and they have like that ribbon of like um, material it's like a, a ribbon a literal ribbon around it um with different stitching they're like the classic I feel like I told my mom I was like mom this is like the cool girl Ugg like if you get this Ugg you're cooler than me like you're the cool girl Ugg 
and she tries it on she's like instantly like it's mine I love it and I'm like amazing so and it was on whatever sale it was on and so we got those Uggs and like the big poster behind the the cash was literally a model wearing those Uggs she's like you're right I'm like no literally mom like you're so cool right now <laughs> and so anyways I was so excited that and now she's like obsessed and my mom's just like me except for she has a wider foot and so it's always difficult to find shoes that like fit well and that are easy but like literally every Ugg she tried on she like loved and found something that fit her like they had all her sizes so she's like now an Ugg convert and I'm like I know girl I know I don't even own a pair of Uggs, but I'm just like preaching about the Uggs. <laughs> but I'm like, I just remember last year going on thinking like, I literally am obsessed with this store. And if I ever need to buy gifts, like everyone's getting Uggs because I just think that's such an amazing like winter gift. But I just spent so long telling you about my shopping trip. I told you it was going to be cutie chats. So anyways, that's what we did Tuesday was go shopping. Wednesdays are always my cooking day. So like I figured, okay, I'm going to cook all day, but also have flexibility to start like assembling everything. I've gotten everyone's clothes, whatever. But I was like, really Thursday and Friday are going to be the days that I like hunker down and pack. And so Wednesday was great. We cooked. Lauren ended up coming for um, dinner as well, which was so fun. And so we had the whole fam together. We were all having dinner and we watched uh, the the movie the new Adam Sandler movie on Netflix you're you're so not invited to my bat mitzvah which was cute and we couldn't decide on something and I was like oh yeah there's that new movie and I said it's interesting because his daughter's in or whatever it was so cute I thought everyone did so good and it was filmed in Toronto and Oakville and the second they were like out on the street I was like oh my gosh that's downtown Oakville I would know that anywhere I used to work there and um so funny because literally Lauren, Trevor, and Becca all grew up in Oakville. Their parents still live in Oakville and they had no idea that that like they were all like so so oblivious to it. But the second they showed outside, I was like, oh my gosh, that's definitely 100% Oakville. (laughs) It was so funny. And then the all the bat mitzvahs happened in the Liberty Grand, which is like an exhibition in Toronto. So I always love things like that. I feel like I'm really good at calling out even places I haven't been well between Vancouver and here. But like, I feel like I can always tell when it's filmed in Vancouver, especially Christmas movies because or even just like any movie because the grass is always like brown and crispy. And I feel like actually this year when I went to Vancouver, everything was pretty green and lush. But like the one other time I went to Vancouver, everything was brown and crispy. So that's just like how I can tell. But yeah, anyways, it's just fun. So we had a good time. And then Thursday, I was like, okay, Thursday's packing. But then last minute, me and Ro got invited to something so exciting, which I don't think I'm allowed to like fully say yet. I'm trying to think of when it comes out, but like it's not anything like that I'm like hiding but like we got invited to go be on the morning show well not be on the morning show but be in the audience for the morning show for an exciting guest and whenever it happens I'll show you because we got to do a really cool meet and greet and so I'll share the picture but that was so fun I was like yeah let's do it so me and Ro played hooky while I pulled her out of school for the day we had it down to Toronto and I've never been on a tv set before so that was really fun it was like super low stress um and it was just like parents and kids so it was so fun and we hung out we went for lunch we walked down by the harbor front we played at the parks we were headed and then we were headed home and there was so much traffic it literally took like 30 minutes to get to Etobicoke which is where the outskirts of Toronto which is where I'm from and it took 30 minutes to get or it took not 30 minutes it took like 45 minutes to get there and the me the google map still said the same time from when i like plugged in and it was like two hours home and it still said two hours from that i'm like okay we've already driven at least 30 minutes and it still says two hours like this is gonna take a while and i needed gas and i was like maybe i should just get off here and get gas like i know where the gas is here and that'll be better than sitting here wasting gas and then having to get off closer to home when i just want to get home because i'm like over it so i was like let's just get off and get gas so we got off and got gas and then i called trevor to be like hey just so you know like I've got off at Etobicoke we're gonna get gas it's gonna be a long trip home he's like oh are you gonna stay for dinner somewhere and I was like like are you gonna grab dinner and wait it out I was like I think we're pretty full up like I'm not sure and then whatever we hung up and then Ro was like I'm hungry I could go for dinner I was like okay so we actually ended up doing a whole tour of Etobicoke which is where uh, we used to live before we moved here so like I showed her our condo I showed her where me and my mom lived before that and then um, we I was like oh maybe we should get a pizza and then go have a picnic 
at the school I used to work at and we could play at the park and we can see the girlies that I used to work with. So we went and did that. So we went and visited my old job, caught up, had a picnic, played at the park. It was like literally perfect. And everything happens for a reason. Like I'm so happy that that extended our trip that way. But then Friday, I had my Wednesday night dinner to edit, which that video takes so long to edit just because like I have so much footage for it. And I was like, I need to get this done because we're so far away from Wednesday right now. I usually should. Like, I've, I've been trying to get it up on Thursday, but I was like, I need to get it up by Friday. And I also felt like I need to pack because we had a busy weekend ahead. So I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm kind of stressing out. So I was like, let me just edit. So I like woke up first thing in the morning, edited it a bit, took road to school, came home, edited, 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 edited it. And then I was like exhausted. I was like, I have to take a nap. So I took like a 30 minute power nap and then I went to pick up Row. And then um, we had to pack to go to Trevor's parents for the weekend. Well, her, she was staying there for the whole weekend, but I was just going for the night. So anyways, I was like, whatever, packing's not happening today. And then I was like, oh gosh, I just don't want to leave it till Monday because we were leaving on Tuesday. I was like, I really don't want to leave it till Monday because you know, I, I've bought everything, but at the same time, you know, there's always going to be last minute things. It's like, I already have a little list. It's like, okay, I need to make sure to get little hair elastics. And like, there's still a few, like, you know, the drugstore run, there's still a few things that need to be got. So I was like, I just don't want to leave it till the last minute, especially because I just want to be so incredibly organized for when Tuesday comes. Like, I just want to be so ready for the travel. So anyways, basically Friday night, we went to Trevor's parents, um, because Ro was going to be staying there that weekend and Trevor is hosting a bachelor party for his friends. So that's why he, and he needed to be in Toronto, but I needed the car because I had things that was going on in Niagara. We had our pickle workshop. So I needed the car to be able to get to that. So we just had, I was like, okay, I'll drop you guys off at your parents. Trevor can take the go train downtown. Ro can be babysat and I will just drive home. And then I can have the car until I come to pick you up on Sunday morning. And so that was the situation. And we, got invited or I got invited to this pumpkin night thing. And I was like, Oh, awesome. Like it's a family event. Let's bring everyone along. So we went on Friday night, we went and did this pumpkin walk around. It was called pumpkins after dark. It was very cool. They had like, everything was carved out of pumpkins and they had lots of different movies. And the first thing they had was Mario and like a projector on a pumpkin singing peaches. So Ro was just like in heaven. Cause that's like her favorite thing in the world. But yeah, so Ro really enjoyed it. And then, um, yeah, we went back to his parents and Trevor got new headphones for his birthday. So he, he was he was uh, trying those out because his parents just gave them to him. And so he was like so hyped about that. He went to the other room, was like listening to music, whatever. And then me and his parents were enjoying some wine and <laughs> four, four cheese cheeses, which were actually delicious. I've never had them before. And um, we started Virgin River, the new season. We watched the first episode together, which I loved Virgin River, but I found... Actually, I guess I'll save for entertainment recap. So then I woke up pretty much. We all kind of had to sleep in like me. Ro didn't wake us up till 730. That was amazing. And then I basically just like had breakfast and then headed home. And I was like, I am packing. And then I packed all the way until the pickle workshop. And then when I came home from the pickle workshop, I continued packing. And I'm pretty much like almost all done packing, which is fantastic. But so I just packed and then we had our pickle workshop, which was so fun and it was so lovely. It was just 10 of us that got together and pickled. And so I now have four jars of different pickles. I made beets, I made beans, I made classic cucumber, and I made spicy different peppers like jalapeno and chilies and stuff. And um, I met the most amazing people. It was such a fun time. I love when I get to meet cuties in real life, especially in this situation. Like I feel like I never get to just like chat for a prolonged period of time and really get to know each other like it was so fun and ev I swear every single cutie I meet it's like wow we'd literally be BFFs like we, we, I really just like am so in love with our community it's like so amazing we all just like get along so well I love it so anyways that was so much fun and it was so fun to get to catch up with everyone I just it was like fill my cup kind of moment then me and my mom actually went for to picnic, which, you know, is my favorite place ever if you're local. But we've only gone for like uh, coffees and sweets, but we went for wine and uh, share plates and it was so lovely. And um, 
we got a few different things. We, I think we got three plates to share. Some fritters, a classic chicoute, and um, oh, a fresh baba ganoush and baguette. And it was all just delicious. And so that was really nice. And it was nice to just have that time with my mom because I'm not going to see her for a while since I'm in Italy. And so, yeah, that was great. And then I had it home and it was like pretty much already dark. And I was feeling like really like, okay, I'm like, committed to doing my packing but I was like I need to take a walk around the block because I was just feeling like so I don't know like I just had this huge social thing and then um I just needed to like wind down a bit so I went for a walk around the block the sun was setting it was beautiful I got some fresh air in and then I got down to business put on Love Island and packed and I'm like at the point where it's like all everyone's clothes are packed I have everyone's shoes lined up I have um all of our like airport outfits like stacked up and it's like basically just the last minute things that need to be thrown into the bag so I'm feeling so good and yeah and then now I know you're talking now and I'm in Italy, but right now is Sunday morning. And so I have to go pick up Trevor and Roe this morning. And Trevor is hosting a birthday party here for him and his bestie. One of his friends, um, they have like a really close birthday. So they had planned to do something on Sunday, but they weren't sure what it was going to be. And then last minute, our pool is still open. Like it closes this week. Like um, literally now it's closed <laughs> today, actually the 27th. Um, so He's like, you know what? And it's cold. But he's like, let's just do our last barbecue of the year, have cold dips, like chill out at the house. And so that'll be perfect. So everyone's coming here. So Trevor's like, come pick us up first thing in the morning. And I was like, okay, if you say so. I said, I'll wake up and then I'll pick you up. But I actually woke up early. So I was like, I'm recording the podcast because I have so much to talk about. Um, I want I wanted to record it last night, but I really wanted to get packing out of the way. So I'm happy I woke up this morning at 6 a.m. feeling, yes, let's record. Um, so anyways, I'm going to go pick them up and then we kind of need to just like tidy up because everything's everywhere. Not Our house really isn't that messy right now but like I've been packing and just like putting things everywhere so we just need to do a quick tidy and I'm not sure when his friends are coming over but I'm glad that I've recorded the podcast now and that I have finished packing so I can just enjoy socializing and being with everyone so perfect but yeah that was my week it was kind of just so unexpected and filled with so much joy and fun and a little bit of stress but like nothing too much I always try to remind myself it's all gonna be okay <laughs> Um, so let's get into this week I learned. This week I learned. Well, cuties, as I said, we're in Italy right now as I'm speaking to you. <laughs> and I this trip is something that's like been talked about with me and Trevor for years I swear since we got married maybe even I think before we got married because Trevor went I've never been to Italy so I'm so excited I've only been um I'm not i the only I, I I always forget that Europe is a continent I'm very confused <laughs> Trevor actually just kind of pointed this out to me I always thought I'd never been to Europe I have been to France I've been to Paris one time and so um I have been to Europe and but like I grew up going back and forth between here and Northern Ireland, which is the UK, which I know is technically part of Europe now, but I always like as a Northern Ir Irish gal, I was always taught like the difference between the South and the North. Like I know, I know it's not like that big anymore, but um, it's just one of those things where it's like we use pounds. So I just assumed like I'd never been to Europe, but Europe is a continent, but like Euro using Europe <laughs> because I've been to like London and Ireland lots. Um, but I have been to France, but I've never been to Italy. So anyways, long story short is Trevor went on a trip with his parents back when he was like 15 or 14. I don't remember. And they did Italy. I think they did a few places, but they and they went everywhere. Like it was like every day they were traveling. They had a car and they were just booping and bopping. They'd spend a few hours there, like go on. It was just like a very much like cover everything. You're here. Just do it all. And Trevor always talks about this one place that he went in Italy and so I always said like for your 30th we're going back we're staying in that region like um because I want to experience it like he always talked about it. it's so grand and me and Trevor have been together forever so 30 seemed like so far away <laughs> and so then um we always like always said that like for your 30th I'm taking you to Italy I always said that and like half of me was like if I say it like we're doing it and then the other half was like 
I hope that I have uh, have the have the ability to to book us that trip. And then obviously you all know my story, but like I went on mat leave, we moved. Um, I didn't go back to that job. I've been boping and bopping around doing different jobs. And then I quit and now I'm doing this, whatever. Anyways, I feel like, and we have row. I feel like there was a point where uh, we kind of both, we never talked about it, but we both were kind of like, we knew like Italy probably wasn't going to happen. It wasn't in the stars for 30. We were still going to do it, but maybe it wasn't going to be for when Trevor turns 30, like our finances, we got our house, we ended up doing construction. I was all over different jobs. Like we probably, we like, I think we both knew it. We maybe didn't say it to each other, but we just knew it. And it was kind of just one of those things like you talk about, like whatever. But then mama's been working hard. I've been, I've been trying. (laughs) I, I think just in my, I knew in my mind, like I there, okay. So I got to tell you, I'm definitely someone who tries to put things out like into the world or into my mind as like a goal without even like knowing that it's really like what I'm working towards. But like there was this retreat this past winter that I really wanted to go to, but it was kind of expensive. So I wouldn't ask Trevor to like send me (laughs) like if I wasn't, I didn't have enough money. You know what I mean? I know our money is our money, like whatever. But like I knew it was like too big of an ask. And like because I I just knew anyways but I really wanted to go to it so I was like if I work hard and I can um make the money I I really want to do this like that was like kind of a mental goal and it didn't happen but like when it came it left like it just didn't happen but then shortly after that all of a sudden it was like okay like maybe something is happening it's like all that hard work I had put in to that thing was what propelled me into whatever. But anyways, so then it kind of like took off after the fact, like my connections with brands and everything and working and blah. And so then all of a sudden in the middle of the summer, it was like, I was just like, you know, I think we can go to Italy. This is me by myself, sitting by myself. I was like, I think we can do it. Like, let's just do it. Like, again, I'm saying let's, this is me by myself. Like, I'm not telling Trevor about this. Also, um, uh, I I'm like I think I think this is like a, I think we should just do it and then I was like I'm just gonna look up flights so I like looked up flights and and then I was like I thought the flights would be like a little astronomical they were honestly not that bad and I was like you know I think we can bring row too like if they were gonna be so much like to bring row might have been too much um if it was make or break but I was like I think we can bring row too and then all of a sudden I was like I- am I just gonna book it like should I just book it and so I I I was like are we going to do this as a surprise? Again, this is me talking to myself. So I literally was, I knew Trevor had time off. Like he still had time off vacation time. So I was like, let's do it. And like his birthday is kind of in a perfect time. I feel like a lot of people aren't on vacation because it's like the end of September. Um, So it would be like the end of September into October. It's like the sweet spot between vacation time. It's kind of when our Thanksgiving is Canadian Thanksgiving. I feel like families are coming together, whatever. So I just like went up to him and I was like, Hey, like, is anyone else on your team off at this time and this time? And I'm like, he kind of, he probably knows like what it's about, obviously, because we've talked forever about going to Italy, but like at the same time, I think he, we both really thought like it wasn't going to happen. So I was like, even if he knows, like, even if I tell him to take the time off and he knows in his, if he thinks in his mind it's Italy, like, it's still going to be such a beautiful surprise because I'm going to book the flights and where we're going to stay. I'm going to do everything and I and I want to pay for it. And I just want to, like, I want it to be this amazing, beautiful adventure for me and my family. Oh, my gosh. Don't cry, Grace. <laughs> I think this is my first time talking about it, like, with you guys. And you know, I'm always so like, obviously just like, this is where I get to really like speak from my heart. But like when I've talked to other people about it, I haven't cried. I wasn't expecting crying. I just think this is something that, okay, give me a second. I need to breathe. Oh my gosh, cutes. We, I went to that pickling workshop yesterday and I still have so many hot pepper oils on me. Me trying to wipe my eyes with my hot fingers. Like I've literally washed my hands so many times and I got spicy eyes. Anyways, wow, I was not expecting to cry. But like, I think this is something that like, I first of all have wanted to do for so long for Trevor. Like I've wanted to just be able to book a trip, especially to this place and just like treat him to something beautiful. Like I've wanted to do that. Also, it's like a 
now that it's it's both of us and me and Trevor are our best selves when traveling together and we have not traveled together in so long like yes we have an amazing relationship I'm so happy for him but like when we travel oh my gosh the way that we re-fall in love with each other and support each other like it is next level so just to get to experience that again and now to get to bring Ro like it's just one of those things and so anyways stop being so emotional like it's okay to be emotional but I also need to talk on the podcast (laughs) it's hard to talk and cry anyways so I just like went up to him and was like hey can you book up this time and he's like yeah like sure what and he kind of didn't ask any questions I think he like I think in his mind he knew what it was for probably but like he also didn't want to like be for sure like spoil the surprise like for himself almost it's like he wanted to wait until I was ready to tell him about it so I literally booked the flights like right then and um I was so excited I was like literally vibrating with energy like I then had to go pick up Ro I did it right before I picked her up from school and then I had to go pick up Ro and we ended up playing with the neighbors and I and I like had to say he was like um our neighbor the dad he was like so what uh well how was your day I was like oh my gosh I just booked a trip for like a surprise and he was like oh my gosh and he'd been to Italy before so he was like telling me lots of stuff and I was like but it's a surprise and he's the only person I told and I told my mom because I needed someone to babysit the dog um and so then it was like this secret that and then I spent the rest of the time on Airbnb figuring out what our like destinations would be everything booked everything and once I wanted to wait till I had everything all booked in place like our stays and our flights um and to tell Trevor because I wanted to make sure that it was like just like it's a it's a done deal we're going it's planned I've put in that work and we're we're ready to go and then you can start getting excited and I can tell you where we're going and you can figure out what you want to do so anyways I actually surprised Trevor in a McDonald's <laughs> and um I was just like hey so you know that thing whatever and I was like, so where do you think we're going? He's like, I want to guess, but I don't want to guess because obviously if it's not there, I don't want you to feel bad. And I was like, no, no, no. And I was like, yes, we're going to Italy. And he was like, amazing. So like, we're so excited, like so hyped. I said, we're taking row. I was like, do you want to know anything? I said, we're going where you want to go, like what you've been talking about. But do you want to know like specifics? And he was like, I don't want to know anything. Like, I just want to show up and embrace it and I was like okay so like the trip is still an actual surprise like the like where we're actually going because we're going to stay a few different places but I am so excited and I think I get emotional about it because it's just one of those things that we've talked about for so long that I have wanted to do and I didn't think I was going to be able to and then it's like once you change your mindset you could make things happen. But also travel is one of those things. I'm totally a person who I don't want access things in my life. As you know, I'm on, I'm on purge, purge October, no purge fall and summer. I've just been like trying to get rid of things and get things out. And I really am not someone who like, like I don't need a lemon squeezer because I can use a fork. Like, you know what I mean? Like I will always like, I don't want excess bits and bobs. Um, I really, love the idea of using um my money for memories and um for moments together for shared experiences that's why I love cooking and hosting and having people come together like I love creating memories that's my favorite type of um joy I feel like losing my dad young I like learned so much about like how life should be lived and it was unexpected so it was one of those things where it's like I just crave living life with people that I love and experiencing and having quality time and so I'm just so excited we literally oh I'm just I'm so excited so my this week I learned is like just just do it (laughs) like I know that um I I'm so grateful and I know that uh I know that this is like a luxury in itself I truly do like as I I have been um working towards this goal for so long and so I know that for sure and I am just so grateful like I really am and I will embrace every single moment of it and I'm taking you all along I'm sharing on TikTok and Instagram of course and I am such a big believer in making as many memories especially photos um but yeah I'm just so excited and so um I just think like a lot of the time we get in our head and we think like should we should we not do it um 
like, I don't know if it's the right time, but like, I really do believe like everything will come back at some point or another and like of course be secure and safe and like it's about a balance but like just do it take the trip or um make the memories or whatever it is like for me it's really this so I can only talk about that but like I'm just so excited and like I really like never even like I kind of like had said goodbye to the thought leading up to Trevor's birthday and then all of a sudden it was just like this in the middle of the summer I was like we're gonna do it like let's just do it and now it's here and I'm so friggin' excited and I want to make sure to embrace every single thing about it before quiet winter comes you know when you just stay inside and don't do anything so I'm so so excited and oh, I'm so glad that I could share with you and I really didn't think I was gonna get emotional and the fact that I got emotional just makes me even more excited that like this is happening Yay. Okay, cutes. Let's get into our roses, buds, and thorns. Okay, my rose for this week, I think was having like a downtown girly day with uh, Ro. Like she loves going to Toronto. It's like her favorite place in the world. But this time when we went, um, because we did go to Etobicoke too, and we were like hanging out in the park, we were hanging out in specific places that I used to just like, I grew up there, I would walk around, now I have a kid, like it just felt so nostalgic, it felt homely, it felt good, it kind of made me sad that I didn't live there, but I am so grateful for where we live now, I really am, it's just like that difference, and like, it was so funny, I was at the park and this mom was there with her kids and like we somehow just randomly started talking that never happens to me here never and I was like wow um I just felt like it like socially all of my friends pretty much live like in Toronto or like not here like most of my friends don't live here like I have my neighbors and stuff but I don't have any like other friends (laughs) here in this location and so it was just like oh my gosh like how come it's not like this to meet people in where I now live in Niagara? Maybe it is and I'm not trying, but then that came so natural and flawlessly. And I was like, oh, and then I got into my head about like, oh, what would have it been if we stayed here? Like, what would my community been? And, you know, that's just one of those things I need to, I to keep telling you, I'm like, I need to work on building a community. That's something that's so important to me, especially like if I ever want to have another kid, I want it to, I want to have a community. I don't want to be, because pregnancy is so isolating and like, it's like, I just don't I want to be put in a place where I like set myself up for the most success I try to do that the best I can in every situation but anyways me and Ro had a great day and I just love a good Toronto girl day with Ro and then my thorn is that I was feeling like a tad bit overwhelmed (laughs) with everything and especially with like not being able to be like so prepared with my packing but I I ended up being able to, but like I was trying really hard to like be like, Grace, it's okay. We still have time. Don't stress out. And I I do love to be able to say like yes to new opportunities and do fun new things. Um, And then my bud is obviously eating food in Italy. Like I am so freaking excited to just like eat everything and go into the grocery store. I want to go into a big grocery store and I want to go into like all the little, I don't know what they're called there, but like the bodegas and like the bakeries and the butcher shops. Like I'm just so excited to experience it all and just like see everything. And like, I've never been there before. And I'm just like, so excited to like you know just like experience it and we're such travelers me and Trevor we love to just wake up in the morning and walk out our door and figure out what the day has in store like we're not big planners in that sense and we're not huge touristy people like we don't necessarily go to all the tourist attractions um we if the I don't even know what the tourist attractions are but if there's like a couple that we're interested in then of course we'll go to it but like and we aren't someone who's like oh what are the best restaurants we have to make reservations we just like to walk around and see what's up and live kind of like the locals and like I always say like the overhyped restaurant is like expensive and an experience and I'm sure it has great food but then there's like 10 other restaurants that are around it that are like thriving and um not not pushed out and you can go there and equally probably have a better experience because it's quieter you don't have to wait in line it's usually more intimate you really get to know the staff like yeah I'm just so 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 excited I have no idea what to expect like literally so anyways that is my bud and then let's get into entertainment recap 
entertainment recap. So as I said, I watched Virgin River, first episode of I think it's the fourth season, I think, whatever the newest season is. And I loved season one and I loved season two. And then I found all the other ones like so much build up for then like a last episode of a cliffhanger, which I find a lot of shows are doing now. It kind of annoys me. It's like, I don't mind. It's like, I like closure and I don't mind continuation. Like it doesn't have to be full closure, but like, that's why I kind of like Desperate Housewives because I feel like they like right off the bat, they started with like whatever the within the first couple episodes you knew that there was like whatever murder happened <laughs> or death. And then the whole episode was like kind of figuring it out and it was a full closure. But then it would go on to another season. Like I love that. But I find like shows now are just doing like the whole show it's like what is going on what is going on what is going on and then it leads off in like oh okay 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 cliffhanger and you're like what so yeah I feel like Virgin River has been like that too so the first episode was okay but like it was just like I kind of was trying to remember what had happened I watched the recap and then it's like okay I'm trying to figure out what happened and then I was like oh yeah it's going to be the same thing probably where it's like slow and then it like leaves off and cliffhanger but you know I'll watch it I will I will but it, I only have Netflix on my TV and I've been watching a lot on my iPad so I probably won't watch it until we come home and it's like the depths of winter and I'm like oh what's what do I need to watch I'm saving up the Netflix shows till you know the darkness the real darkness but I've been watching Love Island and I'm so excited because um I told you the seven day drop or like the one week drop of seven episodes is kind of confusing to me, but it's good for like the traveling. Like I just am downloading all of it for our flights and for our any layovers, anything like that. So I'm excited. I'll probably fall behind while we're away, but that's OK. It'll still be waiting for me. Um, And I'm trying to think. Yeah, we watched the bat mitzvah one, which was so cute. And um. I feel like there was maybe something else. Oh, Below Deck. I told you I started watching Below Deck um, Down Under, which is the Australian one. And literally, I didn't realize I ended up watching it like I had watched it so quickly that I didn't realize I was like caught up to it being played. So last week's episode was like the last episode of the season. And now I'm just waiting for um, the after after what is it called? You know, the after show after Below Deck reunion. So I'm so excited. Like I was like, yay, reunion time. And then I was like, oh my gosh, wait, that episode literally just came out today. Oh my gosh, I have to wait a whole week. So I'm so excited to, um, I love the reunion. I love to just get a bit of the like behind the scene, hash it out, all of that stuff. So I can't wait to watch that. I've probably watched it by now, but I'll let you know eventually, <laughs> eventually. Um, I also apparently got my sister-in-law turned on to the low deck. At least she tried it out. I saw her post about it yesterday and I was like, oh my gosh, I love Below Deck. She was like, yeah, you were talking about it. So yeah, I'm so excited. That being said, next week episode is going to be such a goodie because we have a special guest coming on and I'm so excited. Like, I, all the OG cuties are going to freak, like freak. And then all the new cuties you are going to, I just know, enjoy this episode because it's such a great conversation. So make sure that you are subscribed or whatever you do, follow on all the different platforms. Oh, Trevor said morning, morning. That means I need to go pick him up. <laughs> um, so I love you all so much. Go follow me over on Instagram and TikTok to stay up to date on our travels. And I am just so appreciative of all of you. You are amazing. You are the best ever. And I'm just so grateful that I have this community and that I have this space to come and to come and chat and talk and hang out. Love you all. Have the most beautiful week ahead. And I'll talk to you all next week. Mwah, mwah, mwah.